Are you doing that? Can you do that with your finances? Can you do it with your resources? I'll tell you this, I never served more people when I was broke versus when I served more people today when I'm wealthy. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy Matt Zapala here. Haley and Tia from the Money Smart Basement here in my house. And um, this is a time of the month where we go over your questions, some that you have posted here in comments here on our YouTube channel. And by the way, I just want to give you fair warning. We're dealing with a hazardous element right now at the shooting of this video. That's called a two-year-old on set. We got to shoot, Jordan, we got to shoot. We got, we got, we got, we got stuff to do, handsome. It's my son, Jordan here. He's hanging with us. Uh, all the moms, aunties, my wife has left the house today. It was a very big weekend for us. It was the 50th wedding anniversary of my parents. We celebrated last night. We have people in from all over town and uh, the only one left to babysit this afternoon is myself, yours truly. And uh, we have to deal with my son Jordan here, so hopefully you guys can bear with me. So this is a time where every three, four episodes, we take a quick break to say, hey, let me answer your question that you might drop here on our YouTube channel of the Seven Figure Squad, especially during the series where we're unpacking what the Bible says about money. A couple of interesting things here to reiterate. Number one, over 356 verses in the Bible talking about do not fear. Over 500 verses about faith and prayer, but over 2,000 verses about money and the handling of finances. But just want to keep in mind that money is just simply a resource. It is not our source. So if you want to build your wealth on a biblical basis, you want to build your wealth where God can look down upon you and say, man, my son, my daughter is building wealth on my principles to be a better steward in my kingdom, well, this series is for you. Now, with that being said, we realize that there's three different types of viewers of these episodes. I, th I think uh, I've been doing this since December 1st of 2019. There's three camps that really watch these videos. Number one, the first camp. The camp of the believer that believes that money is evil. Yes, those are the ones that drop these negative comments that, Matt, you're not qualified, you're not this, you're, you're talking about the prosperity gospel, this, 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 and they're throwing scriptures down. It's easier for a camel to get their eyes of a needle than for rich men to get to heaven. Listen, we understand, we welcome you to continue to watch these series, but that's one camp of viewer that watches these series, the series. And number two, there's a camel that says, you know what, Matt, listen, I completely believe in you. There's been constraints in my finances, been constraints in my way of thinking about money. But once you started unlocking what the Bible says about money, about wealth, prosperity, and creating generational happiness with our finances, Matt, thank you so much for these episodes. And number three, the third type of person that watches these type of videos are people that have no clue about the Bible, had no clue about uh, Jesus, no clue about the faith. But they're the non-believer that says, you know what? I never knew that the Bible taught me so much about money, wealth, and prosperity. And Matt, continue to unravel these on these episodes, which I want to officially mention that today is the last time we call this series the Biblical Baller Series. <laughs> because remember, we promised you that once we cross over 75,000 subs, we're going to pick a winner who's given us a name to create the new name and title for these series. And would you like to know the name? Would you like to know the winner? Well, stay tuned until the end of this episode. We'll, we'll launch the new series name and the winner of $500 to them and $500 to their favorite church or charity in their name. We'll reveal that at the end of this episode. So once again, we're here to answer your questions about what we talk about on these episodes about money, wealth, and prosperity from a biblical standpoint. So let's address your questions. Fire away, Ivan, what you got? What about the Bible saying, do not strive for riches? What about Jesus saying, do not lay up for yourself treasures? How about teaching people that hidden talents does not mean physical? Jesus never taught that people should strive for riches. Uh, I have to agree. It doesn't, Jesus didn't talk to us about striving for riches. However, with that being said, he also taught us how to be better stewards. I mean, go back to the original episode of which these episode started on, which was Matthew 25, which was Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He talked about the parable of the towns. By the way, go check out this episode right here, which is where these episodes first started talking about money and wealth and prosperity. And, and Jesus talked about the parable of the towns and the parable of, a, of a, uh, the wise man who gave money. He called them talents in the Bible. He gave them money according to their ability. Again, I have to agree with you. Jesus didn't talk to us about getting rich. However, with that being said, we have an earthly responsibility here on earth 
to provide for our family, to provide for our children, to take care of our spouse, our husband, our wives, our ministry, our, our work outside of just church on Sundays. What do you do at your job or business Monday through Saturday? Are you ministering? Are you helping? Are you being a beacon of light and hope for those out there that are lost and unfound? Are you doing that? Can you do that with your finances? Can you do it with your resources? I'll tell you this, I never served more people when I was broke versus when I serve more people today when I'm wealthy. And guess what? I have to understand. And guess what? I have to reiterate. Money is my resource to help other people that I normally would not have been able to help because God has given me biblical principles. King Solomon wrote the entire book of, a, of, of, of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and layered with inside those scriptures how he held and managed money. Wealth, success, of course his downfall was getting divided. His downfall was getting married to the wrong women of different faiths and pagan gods. That was his downfall. So I completely agree with you that Jesus did not talk to us about how to get rich, correct. But we also do have responsibility of how to handle money with our finances because with our handling of our finances and responsibilities, like how we take care of our job, how we take care of our business, how we take care of our finances, guess what you'll be able to do? You're able to attract people who would normally not have been otherwise interested in faith, in God, and let them say, hey, how can God work in my life? So consider that. Question number two. Hi, Matt. Do you schedule your business around the Word of God? Just as God wants us to be rich, He also wants us to be healthy. I have never seen smoking to relax in the Bible. The Holy Spirit takes care of all that. I have not heard you mention about the Holy Spirit in your videos, which is life to all of our flesh. Just observing. Gotcha. No, no problem. I appreciate the no judgment. Of course, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of cigars. And uh, yes, I'm also an investor in a liquor company, one of the fastest growing actually the fastest growing liquor company in the United States called Uncle Nearest. I'm an investor in that. And uh, listen, I, uh, I understand that there's uh, many different ways and perspectives about how people view um, indulgences, so to speak, like cigars, and whiskey. Well, I won't tell you though. If you haven't remember, the first miracle that Jesus did was turn at a party, at a banquet, at a wedding. What was his first miracle? He turned water into wine. You wanted people there to say, to see these, these miracles being taken place. And his first miracle was what? I mean, of all the miracles he could have chosen to do and where he chose to do, he did it at a wedding and turned water into wine. I remember, I'm reminded of uh, uh, my, my diving into these series and to these studies with Pastor Jamie. Pastor Jamie, if you're watching this, God bless you, brother. But Pastor Jamie, I would meet at the cigar lounge two o'clock every Friday afternoon. And I was introduced to him by a real estate investor uh, who's the number three owner of real estate in a particular suburb, suburb here in the Chicago land area. And he introduced me to Pastor Jamie. He said, Pastor Jamie, talk to me why you smoke cigars. Why do you prepare your message here at two o'clock every Friday afternoon for a message on Sunday at, in, 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 at your church in the west side of Chicago? And he talked he talk to me about the, 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 the tabernacle. He talked to me about the ceremonial burning of leaves. He talked to me in First Kings, First, uh, First and Second Kings, about what it was like to be in a tabernacle to, to get into the presence of God. And yes, I totally do understand that uh, your perspective might say, Matt, you're 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 are not taking care of your body, your temple when it comes to smoking cigars. I totally get it. Listen, the way I look at it, um, we all have our walk, and your relationship is not the the appeasement of man or woman. Because God is not a respecter of men and women. I'm not asking you to respect me either. But here's my relationship. And I hope that your relationship is up there too as well. However you feel led to live your life based on your biblical truth, your biblical concept, without pointing fingers at other people. Oh, you're not doing this, or you're doing this, or you're doing that. I think uh, the world needs a lot better approach, uh, a lot better injection of how do we improve our vertical relationship versus pointing the fingers and observations of other people. But I appreciate you. I'm going to do my thing, and you're going to do your thing. I'm here to please God. Uh, in those moments of me smoking cigars and me ministering to other people on, in a cigar lounge type of environment, all I know is that Jesus wasn't hanging around perfect people, and I'm just one of those imperfect people. So, brother, I hope that you just observe, and I appreciate that. I hope you're not judging me. Uh, I promise whatever imperfection you got your way, I won't judge you either too as well. We got this life to live, and let's do the best we can, brother. I appreciate you observing. Question number three. Hi, you emphasize the Bible. Why do you have the Godfather Michael Corleone hanging in the back? <laughs> yeah, in my office. Okay, so that was a, it was a present given to me uh, that I was considered the Godfather of my company. Um, listen, it's, it, it's it's nothing about me worshiping and wanting to be part of the mafia. It was simply just a recognition gift uh, given to me by my mentor, 
Uh, he called me the godfather of our company. Um, it's not like I follow, you know, godfather type principles or godfather type approach to, uh, attached to anything involved in the media. It's just simply a piece of recognition and prize given to me and something that I cherish because of the effort necessary for me to uh, be that type of person inside my company amongst 20,000 plus ages across the country. If anybody that was selected for that award it was given to my wife and I, I just simply hung it up there in my office because it's, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a an award, it was a piece of memorabilia, and uh, yeah, that's it. Nothing that I'm worshiping the Godfather at all. So this is a question about the the servants and the parable of the talents. Okay. What if they invested the money and lost it all? Got it. What hap- so what happens if the servants lost it all, okay? And I would imagine, back to the parable of the talents, when the master left on his long journey. Now, I don't know how long that journey was. It could have been six months, it could have been a year, it could have been two years, I don't know. But I'm just thinking of all the deals that had to do with the talents that were given them, I'm pretty sure that some of the deals didn't pan out the way they thought it'd be. I'm pretty sure that the guy that had two talents or the master that, or the servant that had five talents, I'm pretty sure that some of the, the deals that they negotiated with didn't follow through the way they expected, okay? And so I think along the way that uh, they invested their talents, that they learned not only from their victories, but also from their failures, and oftentimes people think that the only way I'm going to do something if I have a guaranteed victory, that's not operating by faith. That's operating by fear that, that in, the, in the process of investing and saving and putting money away uh, or starting your own business, there has to be an element of I might not get my money back. I might lose money. I might not get all the uh, reinvestment back or the return of my investment back that I thought I'd have. But that goes along the world. That's why the first servant who's only given one talent, according to his ability, buried his talent in the ground out of fear because he was afraid of failure. I'm very certain that the talents that had two and five talents respectively, I'm sure they had some bit of failure along the way. But with that being said, it did not keep them from moving forward. So consider making sure that if you've been giving a certain talent, you've been given a certain amount of money, you've been given a certain amount of opportunity, that along the way there is going to be some failure. I've had many failures along the way, but it's with embracing failure that I've learned to say it's part of the territory. It's part of your victory story, so consider that. Is God okay with slot machines in a casino? I just won $78,000 in a jackpot on a $5 bet. What is that supposed to mean? Yeah, so this goes along my category of gambling. Listen, uh, I don't think God had a belief in gambling um, because those are things that are left up to chance. In other words, instead of leaving up to your faith, you're leaving up to chance, and chance is not of God. Um, God knows that when you give to him, it, uh, much is given, much is expected to as well. But God also says, test me in your ties, test me in your givings, test me in your, with your money, test me in your finances, that I will not open the windows of heaven to, to just shower upon you, that you don't have enough money, that you, that you don't have enough uh, storage in your storehouses to fulfill the amount of blessing he'll come in with because you are a cheerful giver, that you're paying things forward, that you're being uh, resourceful with your finances and you're giving with your finances. But gambling doesn't lead itself to that way because gambling is an area of chance. You can slot, 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 and you let man manipulate it. You don't think that slot machines and poker machines are manipulated by man? Do you realize that in a slot machine, that, that in, in a gambling house, in a casino, you know the house always wins. Listen, casinos aren't built on winners. <laughs> casinos are built on losers. And so when you're buying into the fact that, man, I can really make myself rich and wealthy by gambling, you're saying, I don't trust God, but I trust the casino. I trust the boss. I trust this house. And God can't honor that, in my opinion. So when you are gambling, uh, it's also feeding into the seed that you can also get something for nothing. And what does God feel about lazy people? Well, many scriptures in Proverbs that King Solomon talks about being lazy. Okay? God cannot bless somebody that's lazy, and essentially that's what gamblers do. Uh, people that depend on their financial resources from playing in the lotto. Uh, Powerball. Like, I, you know, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. Oh, but, but it's up to Powerball, though, because it's up to chance. You're leaving it still up to man. You're not leaving it up to God. God says, leave it up to me. Test me in this and see if I don't bless you my way. He can't bless you in a casino, my friend. But uh, anyway, knock yourself out. Tell me what you experience when you uh, consider that. Next question. How do you use emotional pain, frustration, resentment, anger, fear to your advantage? Wow. Well, it's amazing how God made us an emotional being. 
You know, there's so many things that I go through. And when I went through as, as, a, as, a, as a kid, as a teenager, I went through as a United States Marine from being 17 years old to 25 years old, things I went through when I was in the military, things I went through in combat, things I went through in, uh, in, in marriage, divorce, uh, family court, all that stuff, nastiness, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, 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 vendors, um, uh, people that uh, uh, promise you things and quit on things, uh, people that, uh, listen guys, I've been ripped off the most. I, I'm gonna say this. I, I, probably the three, four, five most ripped off moments I have gotten in terms of sta stabbed in the back are from who? Fellow Christians. <laughs> yeah, let me repeat that one more time. I've been ripped off the most, stabbed in the back, most by fellow Christians. However, with that being said, do you think that keeps me from loving on God? Do you think that keeps me from loving on other fellow Christians? I know we're all flawed. We're human beings. Grace has been extended to us. Um, forgiveness. Um, love uh, has a very disarming capacity towards it. So, you know, when, when, uh, you know when, when people come at me, and I've been on the nasty side many times, and the way of approach when things just don't happen your way, you ask yourself, what is God trying to tell me in this moment? What is God trying to talk to me through? You think that God talks to you through a burning bush? Yo, Matthew, <laughs> Paul, Sarah, Lupe. You think God talks to you in a burning bush in a very deep voice that sounds like you're at the MGM Grand? No. God talks to you through experiences. God talks to you through situations. God talks to you through circumstances. You got to ask yourself, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me in this very moment? And things that you think that you want to be there because you're just so, you're so competitive and blah, 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 blah. You're, you're just uh, after things and things don't go your way. You have to certainly ask yourself, okay, God, what were you trying to tell me in this moment? What are you trying to tell me in this moment? Because some of the worst things that happened in my life led me to a certain way that I'm so glad we're amped at today. So consider that. When things don't go your way, you got to ask yourself, what is God trying to tell me? And in that crisis is Christ. And in that in a rare moment, I think is a, 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 a very bad circumstance for you is really a blessing in disguise. So consider that. Next question. Yeah. Does God make a commission every time you make a sale? That's a real question. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, of course he does. Uh, listen, if, if, if you are a Christian uh, and you believe in, in that your profit or your salary is simply a method to be used to, to manifest and bless others in the kingdom, you want to be a kingdom builder with your finances, not only with your time, your talents, but also with your resources. So to answer your question, does God get a commission every time I make a commission? Of course he does. Every time my business grows, he gets a bigger commission. Of course he does. And I want my God to have a bigger commission check for me. That means that the much is given, much is expected. When you're blessed with much, with the, uh, with the least, that you create it with the most, you're able to cut a bigger check. Listen, uh, I can't wait to share with you uh, one of God's people that will get a check from some of the commissions we make in our business or the revenue we make in our business at the end of this episode. So yes, to answer your question, when, when we make money, we make revenue, we make commissions, does God get a commission check too? Yes, absolutely. And lay it on. I'd love to give more commission checks to God. Next question. This is all absolute rubbish with a capital R. If God wants you to be rich, why are so many poor and struggling? Is there something they're not doing? How many, how many poor are struggling? Wow. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, you know sadly, even it goes back to the Bible. It's not about capitalism or socialism. Uh, what goes on in America, there are going to be always in any society, in any country, there's going to be wealthy, there's going to be people that are poor, rich and poor. And it is in our interest to say, once I'm blessed, I need to help the needy. I need to help the poor. Sometimes you be you got to be able to fight for people that can't fight for themselves. And if you feel that you're able, that you have resources, that you have time, uh, talent, you have time, it's against your blessing it's against god's overarching desire for your life for you to be lazy because you need to be a blessing to the ones who cannot fight for themselves the poor the orphan right you need to be there for them and so when you're when you're saying okay well some well, why there's so much uh, crisis amongst the poor then you also have to unpack that even further uh are those amongst the poor unwilling to work listen we, you know the the country just spent in the last 12 months, 14 months since this pandemic, over $6 trillion has been splashed into the economy. And the crazy part about that scenario is you hope that the poor gets lifted up. 
Uh, but you got you got to know also the people that's going to capture the majority of that money are the ones that the biggest nets to capture the finance of the money. And sadly, that's not going to be the poor. So we need more godly, faith-based people to say, let's get together. Let's, let's band together and let's see what God can do to us and through us to say, hey, how can we be a bit, how can we be a bigger blessing to those in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our cities by being more resourceful with our finances, by being more resourceful with our money, our, our opportunities, our careers. You have a responsibility to manifest that, not only that blessing, to, but to compound it. So it's sad that it's just not today that people think that there's poor. It's always been through the history of humankind, there's gonna be rich and there's gonna be poor. And of course, what did God do? He always looked for helping those who are needy, those who are less fortunate than you. And if you are fortunate to have a business, if you are fortunate to be presented an opportunity and you do nothing with it, well, what good are you in God's eyes? When God says, hey, here's an opportunity for you to make money. Here's an opportunity for start, to start a business. Here's an opportunity for you to invest and reinvest your money. And you do nothing with it. You're just supposed to use that money for the, the poor and the needy. I can't tell you how excited, pumped up I get to be around people that we've helped through entrepreneurship, that we've helped through uh, our financial resources. My sister was just here, and she has a nonprofit, talking about nonprofit, she has a nonprofit called Slavery No More. And I take a, a portion of my commissions of, of, of the things that I've earned, and I fund and finance her nonprofit organizations, because I'm supposed to use this money as a magnifier, and that's what money will do to you. It's gonna magnify the conditions of your heart. So if you're selfish, you're greedy, you're self-serving, guess what money's gonna to do to you? It's gonna magnify that. But if you're a giver, you're about other people, you're about his, his, I mean God's people, about his business, guess what money's gonna to do to you? Boom, it's gonna do that to you as well. But it's your choice what to do with it. Are you gonna be a blessing to yourself, and me, me, myself, and I, or are you gonna be a blessing to other people? The choice is yours. You kind of already got into the next question. Okay. Very simple. Okay. What is money? All caps. What is money? Money is just a resource. It's not a God to me. It's, it's, not, it's not a trophy to me. And I'm just talking about me. But money to me is a motivation to have a resource to bless other people, to bless my family, obviously, to bless those around me, to bless generations long after me. Money, just simply that. Money is simply a resource. Money is simply a tool, but it's not the source. All right, thank you so much for your questions. And it is at this point of the episode, I want to announce the new name of our series here, where its origin was called the Biblical Baller Breakdown. <laughs> I think it worn itself out because thanks to you, our contest was to run a contest for the new name of these series. And we're gonna announce that winner based on your contribution once we crossed 75,000 subs. So, would you like to know the winner and a new name of these series on Sundays? Drum roll, please. <laughs> the new name, thanks to Clinton Donatis, Clinton Donatis came up with this name for the series called Seven Figure Scriptures Series. Seven Figure Scriptures Series. Thank you, Clinton Donatus for your contribution to this name. And by the way, thank you so much. We put all the different contributions here. Uh, make sure we put all the different names we put in here all across the screen. Thank you so much for every one of you contributing your thoughts on what these series should be. And the winner is Clinton Donatus Seven Figure Scripture Series. From here going forward, I'll be announcing welcome to the Seven Figure Squad Seven Figure Scripture Series every Sunday night. See, it even rolls off naturally, okay? So we're going to be sending you, Clinton, $500 to you, however you want to do it, knock yourself out. And Clinton, please send us your favorite church or your, your church or your favorite charity. We're going to also donate $500 in your name to them. And by the way, Clinton, make sure you send us your information, your name, your actual name, your uh, uh, email, your address, so we can send you your money and your nonprofit or church, whichever you prefer. So that being said, guys, again, if you have questions, comments, follow-ups, anything I've had to say. And then I want to mention also, I want full disclosure. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I didn't go to college for this type of stuff. I'm just a kid that was raised in the Chicagoland area and trying to figure out life. And this thing called the Bible started changing my life. And I'm just interpreting it based on my way, my, 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 uh, my perspective on dealing with finances an everyday basis, being in the financial services industry, uh, being an entrepreneur in this country. 
Uh, that's where my perspective comes from. Again, I could be wrong about a lot of this stuff, and it's up to you to discern. I'm just one voice, and I want to encourage you to reference whatever I've had to say with the Bible, with biblical truth, and if you, again, have questions, comments, and follow-ups, and feedback to what I've got to say, please drop them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy here from the 7 Figure Squad Scripture Series on the 7 Figure Squad YouTube channel. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Let's <laughs> go.